big gear. Now hold on, before you guys go anywhere, we are not done with the building yet. I mean, we've barely even touched the sides. All we've done is this tiny little thing over here, which is gonna get a lot bigger. But I wanted to do a bit of discussion, kind of like a progress update before we keep going with the crazy amount of building time lapse. And by the way, I hope you like the music. I'm a really big fan of this guy's music. It's really just banging stuff, and I think it fits really well for the kind of builds that we do. So I hope you guys like it as much as I do. But yeah, let's talk about the build real quick. And I promise we're gonna get back to the time lapse in a little bit. I just really have to get some things off my chest. First of all, it's a crazy grind getting this many blocks down on the ground. You saw I actually had to lower the entire thing by three blocks. So you know my digging wasn't entirely finished when I thought it was, but that's fine. And then of course I had to get all of the black concrete powder down, which was a very big grind. And then came the copper. And here is where all of my planning fell apart, right? <laughs> when I was sketching this out in the creative test world, you know, I was using wax copper. Of course, I will have to manually gather the honeycombs in survival, but like, that's fine. I should have enough to wax all the copper. In case I don't, I can always just AFK a little bit. But what ended up happening is that I decided to start using honeycomb blocks in my build as a replacement for some of the shroom lights, because they're so annoying to farm. Oh my god. God. <laughs> I went and I crafted a ton of honeycomb blocks, which is really great and going to be useful in another part of my build. You can see they're all right here. But that's when like my brain kind of broke. And as I was making all those, I forgot that I actually still needed the original honeycombs to wax and I had to AFK for hours. In total, I think I left my Minecraft running AFK for like 15 hours. <laughs> it was ridiculous. I had to leave my computer on overnight once. I left it on a whole bunch of times during work, when I went out in the evenings, that kind of stuff, during meals. <laughs> it was just a whole mess. And then things started getting worse. Most of the way through my AFKing, I realized that my honeycomb production was going down by quite a bit. And I checked my farm, right? In order to get honeycomb, you need shears. I had completely spaced on that. My brain just bloop, completely gone the fact that you need shears in a honey farm. Before, I was basically just running this farm on empty for hours. I was so mad. <laughs> but thankfully, I got enough honeycomb eventually and I waxed it all up and I covered it all up with the black glass. Kinda wish I had uh, done tinted glass, but that would have required making a crazy amethyst farm, which I do not have the patience for, cause those farms are tedious. <laughs> Ah, oh, man. I gotta say, you guys, I am so insanely happy with how this gear turned out. This is definitely the grindiest project I've ever attempted in survival Minecraft. And we're not even close to done. So yeah, I think I've blabbed on for long enough. You guys want to get back into the time lapse. I want to get back into the time lapse. Let's finish off this hole. There you have it folks, another section of our massive grind is completed. I'll give you guys a bit of an aerial 360 view so you can take a look at it with the replay mod and just really soak in the sheer amount of light and patterns and colors going on in this build. I think this turned out fantastic and I'm so happy with it. As you just saw in the time lapse, it has been days and days worth of grinding resources in the last episode as well as building all this stuff, prototyping the designs and ideas for the different sections in a creative test world, and of course, you know, all the maintenance and behind the scenes work that goes into any massive mega project like the one we're looking at right now. So if you're like me and you respect the grind, a like on the video would be very much appreciated. Thank you, my dude. I've gone around the top of this thing and put down a row of black stone above the entire thing. Of course, you know, the netherrack was only a temporary block. I think it would be really nice to have light going all the way around here just to really highlight this thing from above even more than it already is. It's already crazy <laughs> from above. Oh my god. This is my first time seeing this 
from an air. <laughs> oh my god! I haven't seen this from the air before. <laughs> oh my god. You know, I've done like a little bit of flying over just right above the top, you know, as I've been working on it. And of course, I just recorded a replay, but of course, I haven't actually seen that yet as of the time of me speaking these words. And man, this looks ridiculous. I, I don't have the words for this. This is... <laughs> I've never attempted a project this large in vanilla survival Minecraft before, and oh my god. God, was it worth it. This build is insane. Anyways, guys, if you've noticed that my game looks a tiny bit different, especially at night, I'm running a couple new lighting tweaks, courtesy of the Vanilla Tweaks data packs. If you don't know what that is, it's a website that I and many other Minecraft YouTubers use to have a whole bunch of different, like, quality of life fixes and other miscellaneous aesthetic changes to the vanilla game that are all very much in line with default vanilla Minecraft. In my opinion, they make the game a whole lot nicer. So I'm using a warm glow lighting mod, which you can see here, everything is just a little bit brighter and a little bit oranger. Looking at these big bright light sources, especially like these giant columns right here where they're full of lava, I think there is a very beautiful difference, especially at night. And it works incredibly well with this building pro- oh, of course it's raining again. Okay, you guys get the idea about the light. It's thunderstorming. I don't like thunderstorms. I'm gonna sleep and we'll talk about the other lighting change I have, courtesy of Vanilla Tweaks. Okay, no longer thunderstorming, and you know, the warm glow light isn't nearly as obvious now, but what is obvious is what's right behind me, a water mod, which makes the water just a little bit clearer. <laughs> glow squids look so weird. <laughs> but yeah, tell me what you guys think down in the comments. I personally am a big fan of both of these lighting mods, but I know they don't exactly look quite vanilla, so if you guys have any thoughts or suggestions on that, please do let me know. Anyways, getting back to the build, you might have noticed that in the very beginning of this video, right when the time lapse started, I removed two farms. There was our little bamboo farm and a super smelter right about here, which are no longer here. The reason for that is, well, they just looked really out of place with this build now basically completed, at least for this section. Right, like I built all these farms into the rock and now there really isn't any more rock for these farms to be a part of. And for some builds, like the gunpowder farm and especially the moss factory, it's not too big of a deal. But then we have other things like the bee farm, which is floating, and the melon and pumpkin farm, which is a whole mess. Not looking too great under there. <sighs> yeah, um been meaning to fix that, you know? So I think for the remainder of this episode, oh, I am out of rockets. I should probably go fix that before we fall into a hole. For the remainder of this episode, what I wanted to do was basically fix up all of our existing farms. I still haven't entirely decided if I want to put the smelter and the bamboo farm back in just yet. I mean, they'd be like up against a corner or something. You know, I'm planning on building a storage system to connect to all these farms, and the smelter might make a little more sense if it was over there. I'm also trying to redesign the bamboo farm and possibly add some other farms, as you can kind of see over here. Got a manual sugarcane farm going on, but uh, that doesn't really cut it for someone like me. So yeah, I'm gonna start working on getting these farms all touched up. I'm probably gonna have to move them or make some pretty funky arrangements to some of these guys. I've got some pretty neat ideas, so I really do hope you stick around for the remainder of the video. Alright, I'll catch you guys in a little bit. Progress update! Nothing too crazy, I just wanted to show off the changes that I've made to these farms right here. These of course are the easy ones that were already mostly, you know, looking good, but I just wanted to do a couple little touch-ups and make everything look all nice and fancy. First off, there was a very ugly, like, stone brick border going around the moss farm that has now been deep slatified all the way around. Up at the top of the farm, you can see I've covered up those ugly campfire textures with a bunch of lava and just, you know, basically moved everything one block down. This way, this looks a lot more aesthetically in line with the giant lava pit over there, which, uh... I should probably fill in with lava, but I'm lazy. And speaking of the gunpowder farm, I've extended the pattern all the way around over here to the other side, and it now connects up with the edge of our hole right over here, and 
over here as well. Yeah, originally because this was like kind of built into the rock, right? The texture stopped right about here and here on the other side. So I had to put some, you know, deep slate and copper in there and make sure that wrapped around very nicely. Oh, and last but not least, I extended the drool from our little bee farm monster all the way down. Of course, I don't want it to spread around on the ground, so I just put the glass block down by one and it's now catching the lava. Looking kind of weird, but it's a nice effect. Okay, now for the hard stuff, right? We got the melon and pumpkin farm. TBH, I was never too happy with the way this farm looked, so I'm kind of tempted to tear it down and rebuild it. I'm just not really sure where. The bee farm is, of course, fantastic, but I really need to do something about the fact that it's just, you know, sitting on air. And on top of that, a couple of the back legs are poking into the wall. You can see this one is just jutting in a little bit. This other leg back here, I believe. Yeah, this other leg is just completely stuck in the wall. It's pretty stupid looking. So yeah, I'm gonna have to figure something out with regards to both of these farms, but I think I can come up with something pretty cool. Where did the melon farm go, you might be wondering? They're in the walls. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, you can see that I've hollowed out two giant sections of the ground level over here underneath this first blackstone band we've got above my head and I've put the two melon farms in there. To be honest with you guys, I never liked that original farm design. There, I said it. I was always a little iffy on it from the beginning, and when it came time to actually move or rebuild the thing, I just said, screw it, I don't wanna deal with this ugly looking thing in my hole anymore. Let's just move it, reconstruct the farm entirely. So I'm definitely making more work for myself, but, I think it's gonna turn out a whole lot better. On top of being an aesthetic improvement, I'm really going out of my way to improve the redstone. I really did a very, very lazy job with the redstone on the previous build, and it definitely showed. When I was hollowing out this hole, I broke into the redstone so many times, and it got really, really annoying. So this time, we're doing it right. And on top of that, I've expanded the area of both of the farms. Uh, I believe they were both originally 9x9. Nine nine. Now they're both 9 by 13. Got the hopper minecart doing his little thing down there, going back and forth. Same thing on the other side, watching it glitch around those corners. And if we go behind this thing, get into the nitty gritty, I've kind of implanted two of the hopper minecart unloaders right here and right here. Dropping down here, uh, there's a wall, actually we're getting bombarded by melons as we speak. There is a dispenser under there and under there, and they're going to be shooting the items into the water stream, which then goes down here, and as you can see, they're not being picked up by anything just yet. We're gonna have to route this up into a storage system, which is definitely a little weird, but if you remember my plans that I outlined in episode 14, this might make just a little bit of sense. So I'm gonna get right back to it and make a funky little design for these two farms. I got a chest hat. Check it out, you guys. These designs look awesome. I'm really happy with how these came out. You can see that I did this whole like basalt pillar thing connecting up to the first of these kind of rounded bands that we built earlier in the video. And then I'm using these acacia trap doors, not as a pipe like we're doing over here. Uh, this is actually taking the output of both farms and temporarily just throwing it in the chest. I've been clearing it out pretty frequently because I'm getting a whole lot of gourds out of this thing, man. And then and if we hop inside, we can get a little bit more of the details. Let me grab some scaffolding real quick and just run over here. You can see that the floor and the ceiling are decorated with the gourd of choice. So of course, they're symmetrical. They're the same on either side, right? We've got some campfires down here just for a little bit of motion, having, I think, two layers of campfires down there. So quite a bit of smoke. And then if we build up a couple blocks, you can see I've done a pretty basic design. You know, I didn't want to go too crazy with the texture mixing or anything because it's going to be hidden behind these bars and these trap doors and everything. And this way you can see into the top here where the redstone fires. You can see into the middle where the melons actually grow. And of course you can see into the bottom where if we uh, wait a minute. Hmm, ah, there it is. <laughs> you can see the minecart doing his little thing, making his little loop-de-loops around the entire course. And we've got basically the same exact thing on the pumpkin side. And like I mentioned before, they both feed into our water elevator, which is pushing them into this temporary storage system. We'll be working on a real storage system next episode. 
We'll get there, I promise. Oh, and while I was doing that, I went ahead and put down the super smelter again. Actually, I made two. <laughs> I've recreated the original design over here. We're just 90 degrees to the right from our gourd farms, so right there and right over there. This one is mirrored from the original design and using blast furnaces, that one is basically a carbon copy of the original, just of course buried into the wall and not awkwardly sticking out in the middle of our area over there. Unlike the Melanin Pumpkin Farm, I was always very happy with this design. I love how it kind of looks like a canoe, and I think the colors and shapes are all really great, and of course it's a functional super smelter with eight furnaces. So I wanted to keep the original design, just sink it into the wall. I haven't put together the bamboo farm yet or done anything with the honey farm because I really want to make these farm decorations look really, really nice, which means they take time. So we're going to have to save the for next episode when we finish off this entire area, which means farms, storage system, and any other little touch-ups that we come across along the way. And of course, you know, these are meant to be mainly powered by bamboo, so I'm thinking I'm gonna put a copy of our bamboo farm right up here, and right up here, so they can individually kind of gravity power both of these farms, and they're gonna be a lot more productive than our original very lame and kind of sad bamboo farm. Don't really want to talk about it. It was um, a little pathetic. <laughs> it's fine. So yeah, guys, we've done some insane progress on our industrial area today, and we are going to be wrapping things up with this mega project in the next episode episode 17. We're gonna have spent four entire episodes on this project, but that's just how it is when you're doing something really, really large scale. I hope you guys have enjoyed the crazy journey we've gone on this far, just putting this entire thing together. And with that said, I think we are just about out of video time for today. I know the episode is running a little bit short, but with the crazy amount of grind that I did at the beginning, kind of have to cut things a little short, you know? Episodes still gotta come out on time. So guys, if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to leave a like down below and subscribe if you are not subscribed already. It really helps out small channels like mine and it's really the only way that the algorithm knows to recommend my content to more people. Until next time gamers, this has been Leon and I will see you all in the next 1.18 survival video where we finally finish off this crazy mega project. Take care my dudes.